Welcome back, you little sausage muffins, you. This is a Wednesday. What is on your workbench? And this is a little bit of a special one, because this is not on my workbench. I finished this, oh, I want to say about two, three years ago, maybe two years ago. But this is a great introduction to what is on my workbench, and I want to give a very special Thank you to WargamerUS.com because they are the manufacturer of this hot and dangerous miniature and they are the special guest of today's show because they have actually sent me some more hot and dangerous miniatures that I'm going to show you today. This is what's on my workbench. So, a few years ago, Wargamer US did a Kickstarter, and they have this, I'm going to call them almost frivolous little pieces, history pieces, always with a woman uh, as a subject matter, and they're just, they did them in 28mm and like 54mm, and at the time, even though they're, they're fun, okay, they're fun pieces, I was painting nothing but 28s at the time. And so I, that's where I went in, okay? And I bought all of these miniatures from them and I got two at 54. And I'd never painted 54 before. And so, like, they, they had these really great pieces. I'm going to show you some of them today. But uh, these, the, the, this particular one here, this was only one of two that I actually got from them at the 54 millimeter scale. The other one... I'll bring up on the screen right now. This one, Agatha, I ended up painting and giving to Tim Cask. Because he gave me a gift one day and was like, oh, just give me a painting miniature in, uh, in return. And so I did. I gave him Agatha. And Agatha was the first time I'd ever painted 54mm. And this young lady right here was the second one I'd ever painted. And I fell in love with 54 millimeter like literally fell in love it, it it transformed it like how i approach painting and what subject matters i like to paint now that said i bought a whole bunch of pieces that were still in 28 off wargamerus.com and it it was i always kicked myself for not getting some of the more choice pieces from them in 54 millimeter always kicked myself well these guys have sent me some of their line to paint and i really want to give them a shout out now hot and dangerous is an amazing line of 28 and 54 millimeter sort of pin-up style miniatures wearing uniforms of the most iconic military units. Case in point, this young lady right here, look at her, Bonnie, Bonnie the Empress. <laughs> Honestly, it just makes me chuckle. It makes me just chuckle, it really does. Um, being the boss of a big corporation is always a huge challenge, and when it has a, when it's a French corporation, mm, say no more. Bonnie sometimes really is hard enough. Worst of all, is all that managing staff. If you watch them, they do what they're supposed to do. They're behind the scenes. There's intrigue, never-ending pressure for promotions and pay raises. And constant flattery is pretty tiring. Bonnie. You could paint Napoleon. Or you could paint Bonnie. She's going to be fun. She's going to be fun. We're... We're going to have fun sort of taking her out of the box at a later point and painting her up. Then we've got Hedwig. I probably mispronounced that. It's maybe meant to be more Hedwig or something like that. This is her. And I actually got Hedwig in 28. And she's adorable. And you know what attracted me to her? Well, A, she's quite comical in appearance, right? For a little puss cat. Look at this little puss cat right down here. So her passion is for travelling, in particular North Africa, Libya, Tunisia and Egypt. 
There's nothing like wandering the desert sands in a sturdy vehicle while exploring the oasis. Our heroine is accompanied by her beloved little pet tiger, Irwin. Of course he's called Irwin. Look at this guy. Look at him. I actually got the 28mm version of this out one day with intent to paint it because I love this miniature so much. And I didn't want to do 28s. So thank you, Wargamer US. Really, truly, I am really excited to paint her up and get her on a great little diorama base with some lovely, of course, African sand. She is going to be utterly fantastic. Look at this. You know, there's certain miniatures where they just want to have paint on them. You know what I mean? You see them and you can imagine the brush on the miniature. This is one. This is one for me. Then, the one that I truly missed getting at this scale, and if you know me, you'll know why. Maxima. <laughs> this is a joy. <laughs> when I saw this on their Kickstarter, I had to have it. I had to. Like, this is me. This is Caesar. I, I just, I, I, I just, I, I had to do it. Enlist, they said. It'll be fun, they said. See the world, they said. Nonsense. For Maxima, only Rome counts and not some pesky province. There is culture, civilization, entertainment, fashion, the cream of society, elites. And by the way, far away from those garlic madmen. I swear, I didn't write that copy. But it easily could have come from me, right? Maxima, I really, really, really am excited to paint. Now, one thing about her, by the way, you'll notice the artwork does not necessarily equate to the final piece. This is wonderful. It really, truly is. And I wish they would actually come out with a piece of someone kissing Caesar, because I would do that. But this is still incredible. This I want to paint so bad. And I'm imagining maybe even getting a little mosaic floor or something for her, for this diorama. That would be actually really kind of cool. My little creative juices are going on this and that is nothing but a good thing. This is gonna be fantastic. Now that said, it looks like she is an Oh, yeah, she's, she's, she's a centurion, not an optio, as is appropriate. She's going to be great. Look at the detail on this. Mm. God damn it, I love it when I look at a miniature and I just I just want to whip out the brushes. You know what I'm saying? Like, wow. She's going to be great. I uh, th These guys, by the way, have done uh, just this incredible line. I truly encourage you, if, if these are even intriguing you, go over to wargamerus.com, okay? Uh, they're not paying me to say that. They have something for every single period of history. They're fantastic. And I think, I think they did a second Kickstarter not that long ago. Now, lastly, by the way, this one is very different. This one is not a historical piece. Look what they sent me. Look at this. Ooh, I'm sorry, Maxima, but you're going to have to move out the way a little bit. And, Hedwig, as much as I love you, darling, over here you come. There we go. Look at this. This is Anno Domini 1666, a swashbuckling board game of intrigue and mystery set in an alternative 17th century Vienna. Alternative 17th century Vienna. Look at this guy. I want to put some love on this guy so hard. Like, so hard. There's two There's two pieces in here. The basilisk is in here, too. And then there's the lindworm. I am really curious, not only about the game, actually, but I'm very curious about these pieces. But we are going to open this up on a later show... And we are going to start painting all of these. And I am super excited. 
And I think we might even give some of them away. So watch for information on that in the future. Until then, I want to know what is on your workbench. Share in the comments below. I really am very curious. And if you're curious about how these progress, hit me up with a like and subscribe. Because I'm, I'm kind of excited to actually be showing you guys and girls. Until then, I love you all. Keep on brushing. And I'll see you on the flip side.